Okay, so everyone should have gotten a paper like this that says pocket stitch guide in their um, folder of, of materials. So you can put this together, but you're gonna notice that this is a cool little pocket guide. And if you end up liking sewing, you could keep it handy and put it in your sewing basket. So if you wanna set it up, you can trim off the end piece because you don't need that, okay? And then you can see this is the cover of the book, right? So this is a pocket guide, so it's meant to be small and fit in your pocket. And you'll see that there are some of the stitches that we're gonna learn. The directions and pictures are right here for you. Okay, so, um, hmm. Let's see, if this is our front, right? I think this would make, make it so we can see all the pictures. Okay, so I still have this one, this one. Hmm, I'm doing something wrong. Ah, well, I guess it doesn't really matter too much how you put it together. Okay, and then this way, I can have my pocket stitch book like this, and then I have all the stitches in like a little book format, okay? So the one we're gonna learn next is called a French knot, and a French knot can be adjusted by size depending on how many times you wrap the thread. And so French knots for what we're doing are really cool because you can make different sized little balls. So like, let's just say you were making something that looked like a cupcake, or an ice cream cone. See, this is something my daughter sewed and she made little lines to make sprinkles. But if I wanted a freckle or a little teeny button, a tiny nose that I didn't have a small enough button for, I could make a French knot. So I'm gonna show you how to make a French knot. Okay, so this is our next lesson. It's going to be on French knots. Um, I made a video already, but it didn't turn out or didn't record so I'm going to try again but if you want to look at the directions remember they're in that little booklet that we made um, to make a French knot right so you're still going to need to thread your needle have a short tail and a long tail and create two knots um, so when you read the directions on the paper if it says you are going your first direction is to sew up when they mean up, it means up through the paper, up through the fabric. So that means you're starting on the back side, which is kind of what I've been saying on every video. Okay, so I've got my double knot. Now I already made some French knots and I have three different kinds of French knots. One that's made by wrapping it three times, one that's made by wrapping it five times, and one that was made by wrapping it seven times. So you can see that these might be used for something um, on your stuffy that is too, that is a small detail, right? So I'm going to show you how to make a French knot. So first you're gonna come through the back. So I've already used up those spots. So I'm just gonna find a new place near the three where I can make another French knot, okay? So I'm coming through the back, right? And then I have my knot, so I'm gonna just pull that tight. And then I'm going to bring the tip of my needle. So you're gonna use the pointy part of your needle, okay? And you're going to grab the string and you're going to wrap it around the tip of the needle. And for the small knot, we're only gonna wrap it three times. So I'm gonna wrap one, two, three times, and then I'm gonna go back down and I want that, I want those rings of, of um, string to be down near the tip of the needle. And then I'm gonna poke through pretty close to where I came in from, but not the exact same hole. Otherwise the whole thing will disappear and then pull it tight. And I get this little cute, tiny little bump. Could be a freckle, could be the middle of an eye. Um, you can decide if you're gonna use a French knot what you might use it for. Okay, so if I want to do that with the five and the seven, it's the same thing, right? Except for that I'm going to wrap it five times or seven times. And the more times I wrap, the bigger it will be. Okay, so if I want to do five, I'll do it like this. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm pulling this tight and bringing the needle close to the paper. Oh, I just lost it, so you'll get to see it again. One, two, three, four, 
five. Okay, so you gotta keep the needle close to the paper. And then I'm gonna come back in right next to where I had started, but not in the same hole, but very close. So on paper, I know it's a little bit trickier than fabric. And then you just pull it, and that is what five loops looks like. Okay, and seven, slightly bigger, right? So I'm not going to show you seven because I think if you know three and you know five, you can probably figure out seven.